different. The unbeatable strength of Advil. What pain. Tomorrow on E.T. 10,000 shows, E.T. Who does 10,000 shows? The stars help us celebrate our epic TV milestone. Happening now. He's accused of trafficking a woman he knew for several years. Now, months after she reported it to police, he's behind bars. How San Antonio police caught up with him. I'm Paul Venema. I'll take you to court where a former high school substitute teacher is sentenced for taking upskirting pictures of female students. What is the plane that went down in Iran moments after Iranian leaders sent missiles to U.S. air bases unintentionally hit? We have the latest. And don't get used to this warmer weather. A cold front is on the way and it could bring with it some thunderstorms. We'll tell you more about it coming up in a few minutes. Lime was one of three scooter companies who got contracts in San Antonio, but now it's moving on. Why Lime is leaving San Antonio. If you have an older air conditioner, the refrigerant it uses is no longer being made. Coming up, we'll tell you what that means for you and your wallet. After years of back and forth, a new Brexit deal has been reached. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, a San Antonio man accused of selling a woman for sex is now behind bars. Investigators say it happened over a number of years and they took 39 year old Jose Sanchez Davila into custody earlier today. Dylan Collier on the case that the department's police chief said involved unimaginable things being done to the victim. Ursula and Steve, detectives have been working this case since August, but until recently had no cooperation from anyone except the victim. Davila didn't say much as he was walked past television cameras this afternoon at public safety headquarters. Chief William McManus says it took five months to find someone besides the victim who could corroborate a charge of human trafficking and that Davila would threaten the woman in a variety of ways. McManus described what was done to her. He would transport her from place to place, forcing her into sex acts, uh, putting her on a website, advertising her uh, for a price. More suspects are likely to emerge from this and more charges are likely to come against Davila. According to our research, this is Davila's first arrest in Bear County. Steve, Ursula. Disturbing allegations. Thank you, Dylan. New at five, former Antonian High School substitute teacher Laurel Ruiz admitted taking what were called upskirting photographs of a high school girl and girls, taking unauthorized pictures under their clothing. Ruiz pled guilty to obscenity charges in court today. Paul Venema there for what happened next. Court call State of Texas versus Laura Ruiz. During a brief hearing, 32-year-old Lauro Ruiz pled guilty to obscenity charges. The conduct that this defendant did is shocking. Ruiz was a substitute teacher and a coach at Antonian High School in the spring of 2014 when that conduct occurred. According to court records, Ruiz would take his cell phone and place it on a backpack adjacent to his desk, then call students forward. This demonstration shows how he had his phone in place on his backpack. He would then position the female students in a manner allowing him to record pictures under their skirt. Two students later realized what he was doing and notified the school authorities, who in turn notified police. What he did was take advantage of that privilege and that authority and use it for his own sort of gratification. Prior to sentencing, an apology. He has a lot of remorse, he has a lot of shame, and he's extremely sorry for his behavior. The sentence, part of a plea agreement. I sent you to two years in the state jail. However, I'm going to suspend that and I'll place you on community supervision for a period of five years. Community supervision is a form of probation. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, we now have a mugshot of the Kerrville teacher accused of taking inappropriate photos of a student during class. Police arrested 36-year-old Jimmy Lee McElhaney last month in Palmer. They say the incident happened while he was teaching at Grace Academy in Kerrville. He's now charged with invasive visual recording. Police are investigating to see whether there are more victims. 
Right now, the U.S. House of Representatives voting on whether or not to limit President Donald Trump's power to take military action against Iran. This vote coming one day after President Trump commented on Tuesday's missile attack on an air base that houses U.S. troops. We are keeping an eye on this decision, and if it comes down, we will provide an update once it's made. Now to the very latest into the investigation into the Ukrainian jetliner that crashed in Tehran this week, killing everyone on board right in the middle of that missile attack on a U.S. housing base in Iraq. Many of the passengers were heading to Canada. And as ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports today, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced he believes he knows what caused that jetliner to plummet from the sky. Video from the last tracked position of the Ukrainian 737 that crashed in Iran shows what appears to be a missile hitting something in the sky that then erupts in flames. Canada's prime minister, the first world leader to say the plane was likely shot down by Iran's anti-aircraft system, killing all 176 people on board. The evidence indicates that the plane was shot down by an Iranian surface-to-air missile. This may well have been unintentional. The jetliner disappearing from radar soon after takeoff from Tehran early Wednesday morning, just hours after Iran fired missiles at American targets in retaliation for the U.S. killing one of their senior officials. Iran blaming the crash on possible mechanical failure, saying it is scientifically impossible that a missile has hit the Ukrainian plane. President Trump calling the crash morning, suspicious. Everyone. Somebody could have made a mistake. Uh, some people say it was mechanical. I personally don't think that's uh, even a question, personally. Iranian investigators will now examine the jetliner's black boxes and the wreckage now cleared from the site. Some experts pointing to that hole in the fuselage blown from the outside in as possible evidence of a missile strike. Iran says it has invited other impacted countries to participate in the investigation, including the U.S., since the Boeing jet was manufactured here, and Ukraine, which says its experts are looking at several possible causes. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. And we want to give you an update. As promised, we were keeping an eye on what was happening in the House of Representatives, and it has voted in favor of limiting the amount of power that the president has during wartime. So that update coming just moments ago, they took that vote in Congress to limit the powers of the president. More on that coming up on ABC's World News. Meantime, the growing tensions in Iran bringing the topic of cybersecurity to our forefront. Every minute, it is estimated that there are about 10,000 probes to try and find loopholes in federal, state, and local agencies' software. Experts say these probes could trickle all the way down to your own device. Make sure you're aware that what you're clicking on is more crucial now than ever. Don't click on a link that you don't know. Uh, don't click on an email you get from some strange location. If something seems too good to be true on the internet, it is. Uh, so stay away from the phishing scams. Make sure your software and your operating system are patched and up to date. Um, and just make sure you take care of things like good, strong passwords. Researchers say after last week's assassination of Qassam Soleimani, hacking attempts traced to Iranian IP addresses nearly tripled around the world. Lime is out, and not because the city didn't include it in a new exclusive contract. The company decided to pull its scooters out of San Antonio all on its own. Lime says declining ridership and higher fees prompted its decision. San Antonio, one of a dozen markets that Lime is pulling out of, including Phoenix, Atlanta, and San Diego. Lime also moving its San Antonio Regional Repair Center to Austin. The city says it will continue with contracts for the other two companies approved by the city council last month. In a statement, they say, quote, Bird and Razor will keep the permits capped at 1,000 per vendor for a total of 2,000 permitted dockless vehicles. The city will continuously monitor the market and collect data on dockless vehicle usage. And in the event the data supports additional permits, the city, city staff will present city council with a recommendation, end quote. Coming up at 6, hear from a tech insider about why Lime may have soured on San Antonio. Rather spring-like outside today. 78 degrees right now at the airport in San Antonio. We've got a mixture of sun and clouds overhead. And our high temperature was just shy 
of 80 degrees, topping out at 79 earlier. So take a look at the readings. 80 in Floresville. 71 in Del Rio, 74 Eagle Pass. Some cooler readings where the clouds really held tight for a good portion of the day. And elsewhere, it looks like these numbers aren't popping in. Come on, computer. Okay, well, every so often that happens. Let's talk about what's coming down the pike. It's going to be warm again tomorrow, but don't get used to the spring-like conditions. Cold front's going to hit us tomorrow evening, and that will likely bring us some storms with the greatest chances being in the afternoon. Then... Bigger changes for the weekend back to sunshine. So we'll talk more about this and I'll give you details in the primary threats for tomorrow's storms coming up. Thank you, Adam. More than six months after he was found dead inside his Manhattan jail cell from an apparent suicide, federal prosecutors say that surveillance video has been lost. Jeffrey Epstein was found dead July 23rd. He had just been taken off a suicide watch days before after an attempt to commit suicide one month prior. The surveillance was requested for unknown reasons by his cellmate's attorneys. They say the date and the time was correct, but the footage was actually of a different cell. Lawyers for the jail say due to technical errors, though, the five hours of footage no longer exists. Epstein was awaiting trial over the alleged sexual abuse of dozens of girls in New York and Florida. And some of his alleged victims will talk with ABC tonight. That show comes your way at 9 o'clock before the night beat. To other news now, a man accused of stabbing six people during a Hanukkah celebration in New York now facing federal hate crime charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Grafton Thomas targeted the group because of their religion. Thomas has pleaded not guilty to state crimes of attempted murder. Prosecutors say they found anti-Semitic journals in his home. They also found similar searches on his phone as well as locations of area temples. After years of deliberations, a Brexit deal has now been approved. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson's bill voted on yesterday by the UK's House of Commons. It was approved by more than 100 votes. The next step for the bill is to move to the House of Lords, where it will get its first reading. That takes place without debate. The United Kingdom expected to leave the European Union later on this month. It's been part of the EU for more than four decades. With the Iowa caucuses less than a month away, historically, by this time, candidates are stumping across the state in an effort to rally support ahead of the nation's first vote. But as Nadia Romero explains, many 2020 Democrats are actually taking different paths, spreading out their campaigns across the early states and into Super Tuesday states like Texas and California and beyond. <laughs> From the state fair to diners, breweries, and backyards. Yes, ma'am. Campaigning in Iowa, the first state to cast any votes during the primary process, has seemingly held the key to the White House. Hallelujah! Candidates have staked their entire campaigns on winning the Iowa caucuses, some even making the Hawkeye State their new home. You might be ready to move to Iowa? But that strategy is no longer seen by everyone as the best way forward. I am suspending our campaign today. In 2020, such a wide field of contenders means spreading out the competition could offer a better chance of breaking through. With candidates stumping hard in Nevada, <laughs> South Carolina, and Super Tuesday states. Good evening, Colorado! Mike Bloomberg is skipping the first four states in an attempt to win big on March 3rd, when 14 states plus American Samoa and Americans abroad are all set to vote. But some are not foregoing tradition entirely. Cory Booker is looking to capture Iowa the way Barack Obama did in 2008. And even Barack Obama right now is 15, 20 points behind Hillary Clinton. We're going to surge around caucus time and we're going to win here in Iowa. And New Hampshire is still set to play a big role as the first primary in the nation, where a new Monmouth University poll shows a virtual four way tie. No matter the campaign strategy, in a race this close, every vote in every state could make a difference. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. It's still headed five, it keeps your AC cool, but R22 refrigerant is bad for the environment and it's being phased out. What you need to know next. All right, it may be January, but we're going to talk AC. We've been getting questions about a new EPA mandate that phases out the type of coolant that's used in a lot of air conditioning systems. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore, it's on what you should know and prepare for to keep your cool. 
Come summer, if the AC isn't humming, that's not cool. And if you don't know what type of refrigerant keeps yours cooling, you should. This stuff, R22, is going to be obsolete. The new year brought a new rule. R22 can no longer be made or imported. It's bad for the environment. The folks at Champion AC are getting questions, and so are we. So here's the deal. The phase-out started years ago. If your unit's 12-plus years old, chances are it's an R22 system. So how can you tell for sure? Okay. This is going to be a little tight to get back here. Look at the sticker. If it says 410A, that's the new stuff, and you're good. If it says R22, we're talking to you. So if you have an older unit that uses R22, you may be asking, do I now need to go out and buy a whole new HVAC system? The answer is no. Ben Hubbard says keep on using the system you have. If you've taken care of it, maintained it, use it, run it into the ground essentially. But if and when you have a leak and you need R22, it's going to cost you. The repairs are going to skyrocket. That's when it will be time to look at a replacement. No. Bottom line, know what you have and budget for the day the AC goes out. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Those air conditioners might be humming along. Um, yeah, today you know, tomorrow. Today, tomorrow, some of them may have kicked on, depending on what you have it set at. But yeah. uh, I don't think we'll really need the AC much in the you know, near term here. Today was kind of muggy, but it also felt like it was going to rain. Yeah. It did. It's a really it, strange day. Kind of humid. It was one of those days where it looked like it could rain at any moment. Yeah. We didn't see much. We had a few sprinkles you know, scattered across uh, South Texas, but better chances for some rain as we get into tomorrow afternoon, and that would be kind of a swift line yeah. of storms. So we'll talk about that and, of course, get into the details of what you can expect and help plan your day. And the warmth, too. That's a big, big headline. I mean, temperatures are much warmer now than they have been the past couple of days. Take a look at this. 78 degrees right now and a dew point of 58. So the humidity is higher as well. You notice the little extra hint of mugginess in the air as a result of that southeasterly breeze. Helotus, 80 degrees, 79 in Castroville, Stinson at 77 and New Braunfels 79. So you could argue it's a spring like day today. Catula 79, but a little bit cooler in parts of the hill country where right now we're in the upper 60s. No big changes as we go through the evening, just increasing clouds. Temperatures gradually falling through the 60s and by midnight will be about 66 degrees. With that, probably some isolated little sprinkles developing. Still a bit of a breeze though through the night. You noticed the wind yesterday. Uh, especially today, you notice the breeze and tomorrow it's going to be the same. It's coming off the Gulf of Mexico and that's helped to really increase the moisture content of our air. So dew points were in the 60s earlier today and they'll rise again later on tonight and put us in that muggy category. So you'll feel that mugginess in the air and that's going to help. I think also develop some showers as the cold front approaches as we get into tomorrow afternoon. So let's talk about that in our overall setup. Mainly gray throughout the day today, but some areas of sunshine here and there. We're looking at a big weather feature, this dip in the upper level flow over the western US. This is actually amplifying. It's getting bigger and stronger, and it's going to dive into Texas tomorrow, and with it will be a cold front. It's going to drag a cold front through town, and that's the primary focus of the storm chances, because that's what would help get the air lifted and generate those storms. So tomorrow morning, let's go through this. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, cloudy, a few sprinkles, just like what we had earlier today. Nothing in the morning, even at lunchtime around noon to 2 p.m. And maybe a few sprinkles here and there. But the cold front will just be moving into the hill country at that time. Then we get into the kind of mid to late afternoon, and that's when storms should start developing and become more likely. We're not expecting anything very widespread. It looks like a thin line of storms along this cold front that's going to be moving through town. And it's going to be quick as well. By 10 o'clock, probably well east of San Antonio and moving through some of our far eastern counties, uh, pushing closer to Houston. As for the severe weather threat, there is the potential of that, uh, basically from Johnson City through Blanco, uh, Bernie area, Sisterdale, San Antonio, Pleasanton, and eastward. We do have that slight chance just as that line of storms moves through. Primary threats with that would be hail, maybe an inch to an inch and a half in diameter, and some straight line winds of 60 miles per hour. That's the primary threats with this. Can't rule out an isolated tornado, uh, maybe far east of town. So sprinkles to start the day. 
Then the primary timing for thunderstorm potential is 4 to 8 p.m. tomorrow. I'll say that again. 4 to 8 p.m. looks like the primary time we could see the storms. Then we get into the weekend, sunny and back in the 60s. Another weekend with sunshine and comfortable temperatures. You arrange it so well mm -hmm. each time. Well done. All right, Spurs with two impressive back to back. They are, and they're still in the middle of this road trip. They're headed to Memphis now. And what is amazing about this is they beat two of the best teams in the NBA in back to back games one at home, one on the road. And last night in Boston got scary in the third quarter. We'll show you why. And did Jerry Jones hire the former Packers head coach to help Dak? We'll see you coming up. Our right, San Antonio Spurs were their biggest win on the road when they were able to beat the Celtics. The second time in two games, the Spurs have beaten one of the best teams in the NBA, going back to back against Milwaukee at home on Monday. And how about Derek White on defense, poking the ball away? Lonnie Walker, the fourth, the scoop, heads to the hoop, and the Spurs are out to an 18 point lead. DeMar DeRozan would lead all scores with 30 points as Baskin and Fowl got the Spurs ahead by 22. Then trouble in the third quarter. That's when Kimball Walker ran into a brutal screen set by LaMarcus Aldridge. No foul called on LaMarcus. Instead, it was on teammate Daniel Thieves. For a foul on Derek White. Walker goes off, is ejected from the game. Head coach Brad Stevens hit with another tee. Then a fan throws a full can of beer that lands right in front of the Spurs bench. That fan was arrested. Later, Stevens apologized for the incident. Lonnie Walker would score 10 of his 19 in the fourth quarter. The Spurs beat the second beast of the East. 129 and 114. Next up, travel to Memphis to take on the Grizzlies. That'll be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. One of the reasons why Cowboys owner Jerry Jones hired Mike McCarthy as his new head coach is his experience in developing quarterback Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. That included nine trips to the postseason, ending the Cowboys playoff hopes twice, and getting the Super Bowl win in Jerry World in the 2010 season. Now Jerry is counting on McCarthy to do the same for Dak Prescott, who at some point is going to be paid as an elite quarterback in the NFL. During his press conference at Cowboys headquarters, McCarthy told us he's up for the challenge. I've always been impressed with him. There's, you're, you're going to be able to run the whole offense and then some. So, uh, and I think he has an incredible foundation to build off of. And, and our offensive system will be built around making a quarterback successful. That's, that's, the way, that's the way I've learned it, and it's the way I, I believe you play offense. So uh, we have a great one there to work with. All right, the Cowboys sign out today. Wide receiver Amari Cooper, linebacker Jalen Smith have been added to the Pro Bowl. Did injuries to Mike Evans and Luke Keekley, giving the Cowboys six from the Pro Bowl roster. Two local boxers step into the ring for the very first time in front of their hometown fans, and they are part of the big boxing card this Saturday in the Alamo Dome. Joshua Frank, who attended Brandeis High School, is the NABF Bantamweight champion after three straight fights with Austin Negretti and is moving down a weight class to face Alejandro Burgos. And meantime, the undercard also includes Hector Tanahara, the Holmes High School grad, who has defended his WBC US NBC lightweight title belt now with a perfect. 18-0 record going up against Carlos Burgos. I've been sparring top-notch, top-level fighters. Uh, been looking good. I finished camp here in San Antonio, so uh, getting ready to meet my dad the last couple of weeks. So I feel uh, real calm and, and ready for Saturday night. All right, tickets available. Ticketmaster, the Animal New Box Office. For more on this, go to KSAT.com right now. Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. All right, there's your headlines. Warm again tomorrow. Storms likely by tomorrow afternoon. And then you look ahead into the weekend, and, well, we're sunny again. All right, thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. See you back here at 6.